Hi, my name is Vicki Fairchild. I'm here again with my sister Selma. And one of the things we want to talk about today is how it affects the family and other children in the family when one of the siblings has special needs. So as we've mentioned um, previously, Joshua was the oldest of five siblings. Yes, <laughs> Um, there are lots of configurations of families. Sometimes the child with special needs is the youngest. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's in the middle. Sometimes it's in the oldest. And so for every, every family and every child, it's going to be a little different. But I want to, let's talk about some of the challenges and some of the blessings um, that you experience with your children having Joshua as the oldest. As the oldest. <laughs> oh man, do you have hours? <laughs> this will this will be hard to put in just a little nutshell, but um, I think one of the most beautiful things about Jeremy, Jamie, Jacob, and Jansen is how much they love their brother. And I. There's just hundreds of stories to demonstrate that, but he was blessed with incredible loving siblings. He was. He he was, and that was modeled by his parents. <laughs> <laughs> but still, even with that, there was a transition period. Yes, there was a transition, transition period. period. Because they, I remember how I would imagine, how I would explain it would be, um, they went through a time when he was like their buddy. He was like their age. Right. Yeah. And then... They would all surpass him. They would, they would pass him up. Mm -hmm. But after passing him up, there might have been a little bit of time where it, was, it could be difficult. Yeah. There was, yeah, there was, I mean, every day had difficulties. <laughs> yeah. There was no doubt. And with, with each child, um, especially the fifth Jansen, when he was born, I did have three in diapers. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so, <laughs> and one was pretty tall <laughs> and only for about six months. But it was, you know, there was that transition period of really um, a lot of extra work, a, a lot less sleep. Right. Um, and actually, each time I also had to protect a baby right. because Joshua was aggressive and he, when he threw things, it could land in the baby. It's great. Right. It could, you know. So there was a lot of uh, alertness to possible danger that uh, to be aware of with each sibling. And so, for example, I could not lay a baby on the floor if Joshua was around. That was right. just, you just didn't do it. So. Right. I grew up knowing that, but I'm just thinking about it now going, oh yeah. No, he, yeah. There he, was there was he, no little play play area on the floor for the baby. No, it, w it would have to be in something, but even then very high alert. Yeah. Yeah. For them, but um, uh, just, <laughs> you know, just thinking back on those days, sometimes I know I was blessed with extra strength. Yeah. Because... <laughs> It definitely wasn't easy, but I, I loved being a mom, no matter, and I loved my kids, every one of them. I wanted them each to love each other. So how did you help, help your kids as they went through this whole, like, Joshua and I are playing about the same level, and then they'd pass him. How, how did you help them as they? I think we, we just tried to do things as a family and celebrate victories, whether it was for Joshua or for them in whatever stage they were at. Uh -huh. And they would gradually, you know, Joshua could be a little scary. So they each, um, Jeremy probably did not have to pass this because he, he was like the big brother. Right. He was... Um, but where this big brother of theirs, when they were small, that was aggressive and could throw things and could hit, he was, he, he, they had to learn how to deal with that. And there were so many different ways to do that, whether it was just to leave the room, right. <laughs> if it was a really bad episode, um, or many times they would, it was really cute. I can remember one time where he just melted, had a total meltdown and, um, one of the kids said, 
Joshua, here's a fun Frisbee and threw something in the air to divert him and somebody else, you know, then joined in. The next thing I knew, they were all trying to make him laugh instead of running from the room. And I, they were diverting his attention and just, and it worked. I mean, that's, that's amazing maturity yeah. for they children were young. that were young yeah. to help solve this problem. And they hugged him. They loved him. Right. And because they loved him, their friends loved him. It, it just was contagious. Yeah. 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 When they talk about him now, what are some of their favorite stories? Oh, <laughs> I think we talk about different stories every time, depending on the situation. But, you know, whether it's phrases that he would just say, hey, come here. You know, we all love to, they can do it all better than we can. Right. I mean, they say they imitate it better than I can. My brothers imitate it better yeah. <laughs> than I can, even though. Um, but just, we just talk about, he was just part of our family. Yeah. You know, there were some vacations he didn't go on because he would have been in danger, you know, if it was like the beach or something. That right. wouldn't have worked. Um, but he did go camping with us. We went, you know, to family's houses and we just, we just probably adapted more than we realized. <laughs> I think. Well, I mean, I think because he was there from the beginning. Yeah. He was just someone you always adapted to. Right. So you didn't see, feel the change. Yeah. Now, as a parent, what are some of those qualities that you see in your children that you think they developed because they had someone like Joshua in their lives? Well, I, I think they came with big hearts. Okay. They came with huge hearts and an instant love. Mm -hmm. And so they taught me mm -hmm. many times because of their acceptance and their, you know, they, they and their neighbors, they took Joshua on bike rides. They played basketball with him. They threw rocks with him at the river. You know, they, they did it and they weren't going, do I have to mom? Right. You know, they went down the driveway because he learned how to sit on a skateboard and go down the driveway and ruin his shoes. But that's okay. <laughs> he was having fun. The shoes didn't matter. Um, but, you know, they, they did those things with him. Right. But they still got to play with their friends. You know, right. They didn't have to be with him at all times. But I just felt like they, they saw him as part of the family. Right. Now, at, have you... Well, that sounds funny. They, he was part of the family and they weren't... They, just include him. We were all there together, learning, growing. Right. Yeah. And just, just loved him just as he was. Yes. Because that's how you loved him. I loved him. <laughs> just as he was. Yes. Now, as they um, grow up, I know that they interact with the maturity with other special needs kids at sometimes. Yeah. I mean, also at a very young age. Yeah. This didn't only extend to Joshua because they participated in some of the leagues. With oh, yeah. You. They they helped with T-ball. I mean, they helped me at the park no matter where we went. They also got to play, but but they also were there. You know, right. they they I I felt a huge gratitude that they. I did not feel that resentment. For their brother. I right. felt love. You know, even though they had to get past the fear of him when they were younger and he was bigger, they right. still did. Right. And they and they were there to help me and they were there to cry with me when things were really hard. Right. Yeah. Wow. Because I remember one time Jeremy said to me, Mom, this is so hard. I said, it is. It is. But it's okay. And he, was, and he was still right there, doing the hard. Doing the hard. Mm -hmm. I, I know even helped sometimes with the baths and things like oh, that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got good stories. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Doug and Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll let him tell that. Yeah. <laughs> I think, though, um, just like with you, the growth that you experienced just having a special needs child yeah. that is available to the siblings of a special needs child. Absolutely. And I don't think we can put a price tag on that. There is no price tag. <laughs> because it is such, as you said, they came out with big hearts and maturity yeah. and had to learn things at a very young age. Yeah, they did. And I know that sometimes there's a fear with parents when they do have that 
uh, a, a special needs child and siblings of how to balance it. It is an act. It I is, mean, it I is a balancing act. <laughs> I appreciate what you said that sometimes there were activities that you couldn't bring him to. And, and that was okay right. because it was what was best for him and what was best for your kids. Right. And you had to, you had to balance, balance that. Thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> I know that as we, anyone is balancing these things, yeah. it, to go back to something else we said, you have to give yourself grace. Because it's going to be different for every person. It's going to be different yeah. from every person. It's going to be different for every type of disability yeah. and for every sibling. But just know that everyone's probably doing the best that they can. And we just need to move forward with that big heart and yeah. that love. Yeah.